are you seeing this? Like, what is this? I used just as much as this as I did that. What's going on? Where did the yarn go? I can finally start my fall sweaters. I am so excited to start the fall sweaters. I just got one done. Well, actually, currently I'm working on it, but hopefully when this video comes out, it will be done, I hope. And I probably would have been wearing it at the intro if it wasn't in pieces, it's, it's this one. Anywho, what are we making? We're making a sweater. With these colors, they're in here. These are the colors. Don't know what the technique is called because here's the thing, I'm not actually gonna be making a pattern or anything. All I'm gonna be doing is like this wavy kind of crochet and I just thought it was so cute. Where I got the idea from is I made, there's my little paper shoot camera, made this little case for it using the exact same colors because I'm working on my temperature blanket, which, you know, is a process and you'll see that at the end of the year when it's done. These colors were really close together in the temperature blanket and I'm like, wow, I really like those together. So I made myself this, you know, this little camera case and I just keep looking at it and looking at it and looking at it. I'm like, I want this to be a sweater. I want this to be a sweater so much. This one here is like the chevron zigzag pattern and I don't really want to go with this one because I've done this so many times. So I want to try another pattern and that's like this wavy pattern. And that's, that's pretty much the entire project is just this wavy pattern. I'm going to do it for the front. I'm going to do it for the back and I'm going to do it for the sleeves. And then I think I'll be putting a little bit of ribbing on the bottom. I'll be making some cuffs. I don't know what collar I'm going to go with yet. Probably like the pointed collar or maybe like a cute little round Peter Pan collar. That one would also be good, but I don't know how to do the round collar. So it probably will be the pointed collar and what collar I'm picking. Not entirely sure yet. It will be one of these, but I don't know. I'm kind of gravitating towards this brown color for all the trim pieces, but we'll see. By the way, they all are the loops and thread impeccable yarn that you get at Michael's. So I had to spend a pretty penny on them, unfortunately. This color here is called Walnut. This one is Pumpkin. And then this color here is called Heather. For this one here, I was really debating because I normally don't go with this color in general. It's usually like an off-white or I go yellow. I feel like this Heather color is kind of like right between it. Like when I'm looking at this, sometimes I forget that this is the Heather color and I think it's yellow for some reason, like a pastel yellow. But I decided to go with this one because here's the thing. Although I love Reese's pieces, I don't want to look like I'm wearing them. So if I would have went with a yellow, that's the vibe it would have had and I, I didn't want to do that. So we're going with this one. I am going to be using a five millimeter crochet hook, which is up here. Also, I have this. I don't know if I showed y'all. It's this little thing I got in an estate sale. It's actually for your toothbrushes. And I put my Furls crochet hooks in it because they fit so perfectly. If you don't have money to buy one of their expensive crochet hook holders or whatever, just use a toothbrush holder. Anywho, that pretty much sums up what I'm doing, the yarn I'm doing, the pattern I'm doing, because it's not very, it's not a really intricate pattern. I say this now, even though I've never made this pattern before, but I feel like it's gonna be okay. I don't have to do a graphic or tapestry crochet, even though tapestry crochet is my favorite. I just thought this would be like a more of a simpler project before I get into the Halloween projects that are gonna be a little bit more complex. I'm also really excited for those. So yeah, let me just get right into it. This is how far I've gotten so far, and this this project is actually really, really easy. Very similar to the chevron zigzag pattern. It's probably the same amount of steps, it's just different how you do it. I really like the color combo. I really like how to do how I'm doing this. The only problem is it is so boring. I know. It's just so boring. It's so boring. I'm gonna get it done because I know it's gonna look amazing and I really want to wear it this fall. But this is the most boringest project that I've done in so long. It looks cool. It looks fun. But all I'm doing is like math in my head. Just counting in my head. The only thing that's getting me through it is that I'm watching Gossip Girl. I have been trying to watch this show for four years. Okay, I didn't watch it when it came out, but it's so funny because when it came out, it was I was like the same age as them. Anywho, I hate all the characters. <laughs> it's so annoying, but I need to know how it ends. And I'm so close. I'm on episode nine and there's 10 episodes of this season. It's pretty much the only thing that's getting me through this. I think I'm almost done the front panel or the back panel, who knows yet. And then when the front panel's done, then I'm gonna do the back panel and then I'll do the sleeves last because I don't know how I want it to fit quite yet. I'm also not too sure how I'm going to attach it because it's like squiggly lines and they're not flat. I'm also thinking for the bottom, maybe just leaving it like this squiggle. Part of me was I was going to do ribbing on the bottom, but I would do ribbing on the bottom when it was all put together anyway. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all together and then see how I like it. I still think I'm going to do ribbing on the sleeves. 
because the sleeves are just gonna be way too wide. And so it's not what I want. I'm debating if I wanna do it on the body net. So we'll just have to see how it looks when I'm done. But so far it looks really cool and I'm making a lot of progress. It's just kind of boring. Almost done the first skein of yarn for each color and I've used all of them pretty much equally. I think I have to do one more row of orange and then it'll be equal. Are you seeing this? Like, what is this? I used just as much as this as I did that. What's going on? The orange looks a little bit bigger because yes, I do have to do a different row. So like the orange and the brown are pretty much like on par, like they're the same, but that one. Where did the yarn go? I didn't add it anywhere. It's the same. Hmm, that's just, that's just odd. Just got to the end of the second piece. Either it's the front or the back. I, I don't really make my decisions until I start connecting them, but look at how much yarn. I didn't even realize that I was like near the end of this ball of yarn until I got right there. So that's it for the brown. I still have this much for the orange and I had to start a new one for the white. I don't know why the brown color is the most used color and yet I ran out of the white one. That's on you loops and thread. The front and back panels are done, which means I can start the arms. What I did is I took this sweater here, which probably is the best fitting sweater that I have. So I'm using this as a template. And what I did is I stretched this out. So this is the same size as the pumpkin sweater. So like the front panel from the arm, to the arm is the same size because now I have to figure out the arm, right? Like how long I need to make the arm. What I did is I folded this. This is what I've been working on the last two days. And so it lines up with the arm here and then it lines up with that down there. I think I'm gonna cut the end of this. You know what? Ooh, sorry. I'm just thinking about this for a second because what I realized is this is actually upside down. Where I started, which is up here, is where I want to connect it together. And so I feel like when I mean upside down, I mean like this is where I started. So technically it should go this way, but it goes this way. But then that would also mean that I'd want this flip to go in that same direction. Also, so that way the pattern continues where it goes brown, white, orange. Otherwise, if I flip it over, it would go brown, orange, white, right? So it has to go this way. And what I'm kind of thinking about now is I want to end with the color brown because the cuffs I'm gonna do in the brown. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try it on, see how it fits. If I think the sleeves are good, I think I might just take this layer off here, the white layer, or I add another orange layer and then another brown layer. So I either add two more layers, like two more rows, or I take off a row. So we'll see how that goes. After kind of doing a try on mock-up the best I could do, I decided I am gonna add the two more rows so that way it ends in brown and that way I can put the cuff on. The only thing is maybe I won't be making the cuff as long as I normally do. But I think that's okay with this project. This one's gonna be a little bit different than the rest of them anyways, because I don't even think I'm gonna put ribbing on the bottom and I always put rib ribbing on the bottom. So we'll see how it is. If I feel like I need to, then I will. But uh, so far, I don't think I am gonna put ribbing on the bottom. We'll see. But first I gotta finish the arm and then I gotta finish the other arm. This is always the most difficult part. You have to make the first one in order to know what you're doing for the second one. So you gotta get the first one right the first time. Because if you don't, and then you make the second one and then you'll have two things that are wrong and then you gotta redo them gonna add two more rows to this. I'm on the last sleeve and I messed up. This is the first, well, here's the thing. This is the first time I messed up kind of in this project. So right here, there's one, two, three, four, five. When there should be three and then two should be looking like, like this one, how there's two, but there's only one loop. There should, those two should also be in the same loop, but I kind of skipped that. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do three double crochets and then crochet them all over at the end. So basically how I did this one here where there's two loops, then they're in the same crochet kind of thing. I'm just gonna do three. Also, uh, Totoro doesn't want me to do anything. Do you, Totoro? Look at those paws. Why don't you sit down, huh? You're just a baby. Oh, she's a baby. Look at how cute she is. Yeah? Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> I just kind of want to give you a quick, I don't know, should I just call these like crochet minutes or something like that when I just kind of showing you how to actually do the stitch really quick. It's not a tutorial, but like just in case you're wondering, yeah, I'll just call it quick crochet minute. Quick crochet minute. 
There are a lot of really good tutorials on YouTube, which is how I learned how to do this one. It's very easy if you know how to do the chevron zigzag stitch. It's kind of similar to that. Different, but kind of similar. What we're doing is we're going up to the peaks and then we're going down to the valleys. So to start this, what I'm doing is I'm doing three double crochets, which UK is treble crochets. Okay, and then when I get to the top, I'm going to be doing two double crochets in this stitch and then two double crochets in that stitch. Going back down into the valley here, I'm going to be doing three double crochets. So how I did three going up, I'm doing three going down. And then for the valley, what you're going to do is you're going to do double crochet here, but you don't finish the double crochet. And then you do another one here and then you finish them together. I know there's a technical term. I don't know what it is. And then you're going to stop instead of yarning over and pulling through those loops. And then you're going to do another double crochet in the next stitch. Just like that. And then you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through all three of those loops. And then you're gonna do it one more time on this side. And then pull through all three. And that's how you do your valley. You work your way back up again by doing your three. So this is pretty much it. Now that you're near the end, you're still gonna do those three doubles. One, two, three. When you get to the end, you're always going to end on two double crochets. You've done your three, you're going to do two into this space right here. And then that's where I stop because I'm switching colors. What's really great about doing the three colors is when you get to the end, the only other color that you can switch to is the color you need to switch to because on the other side is the working yarn for the white but on this side it's the working yarn for the brown and brown's my next color so all i'm doing is just pulling this over pulling that through and finishing that stitch now turning over you're going to chain three this is going to count as your first double crochet then you're going to yarn over and in that same space this one right here you're going to do a double crochet and that counts as your two double crochets that you start with so you end on two double crochets you start with two double crochets these crochets do not count towards your three doubles that you have to do before you get into your valley so that way you get like a clean edge and whatnot and that is uh essentially the ripple stitch again there are better tutorials on youtube to learn from that's how i learned how to do this kind of put it together this is what's looking like I think it looks pretty good. So still don't know how I want the bottom yet. I really like how this ribbing looks, so I might leave it. But like once everything is put together, that's when I can like actually see how it fits with like my, my regular pants. Cause right now these are just like my comfy pants. I don't know how they're gonna look. So now I'm going to attach all the pieces together, try it on again, and then we'll go from there. I thought it was gonna be a lot more difficult trying to attach them with these wavy lines, but really it's not. All I'm doing is just kind of like, just like stretching it out a little bit. And then with a the yarn needle, I'm just, you know, doing the back and forth. I attached it all together. This is what it's looking like. I did put a pair of jeans on just to like see. I don't think I'm gonna put a ribbing on. I really do like this. Don't know if I wanna make it any longer though. That's the thing, but but here's the thing. Smart me decided to put where I finished off on the bottom. So if I wanna add more rows, all I have to do is I can just continue more rows down. The sleeves though, I am gonna cuff them. I don't really like how they're like wide like this. It's okay, but I want them cuffed. I don't know about the collar yet. I want the pointed collar, but do I even want to put a collar on now? I don't know. Like I said, when I was like attached to them, I thought it'd be a little weird because of like the ripple. I thought the same thing might happen with the cuffs, but they look pretty good to me. I'm not doing anything to adjust. Like, I thought I would have to do something to do something with like, you know, adjust the math for like the dip. Like I would have to add more chains or something and that was kind of stressing me out. But no, I'm just making the cuffs like I normally do. Like if it was just a flat edge and this is what they're turning out. Sure, they're a little bit bulkier where the peaks were, but I'm not mad at that. This is actually not too bad. I'm gonna do something different. I'm actually gonna do a single crochet neck. 
which I've never done. Usually I do the ribbing or I do the pointed collar. But just the way this sits and it fits, don't think the pointed collar is the right look for this project. Just had difficulty with the ribbed neckline lately and I just don't like how they fit. I'm gonna try a single crochet around and see if that works. So we're gonna go with it. We're gonna see if I don't like it. We'll go to the collar look. It's late at night I mainly tried it on because I'm working on the neckline right now And I really like the neckline and I think I'm gonna go a little bit higher so that way I can like roll it over But now with it on I kind of want to put ribbing on the bottom I know I like how the ripple is like the ripple looks cute and all but like it's it's just really baggy And I think that if I put ribbing on the bottom, it's just gonna tie it together so nice because it looks so cute right now like it's so cute i'm also very tired i think i'm gonna put ribbing on the bottom because i think it will just tie it together which means of course i'm gonna have to spend more time working on it i just think the ribbing on the bottom i think it's just gonna look so much better i know i could stop i know i could stop here but i don't want to i want to put ribbing on the bottom that's that's the final decision last night i decided I need ribbing on the bottom. Although like uh, this looks cool. I like it. It's cute. It just looks unfinished to me. And I think that if I didn't do the ribbing on the cuffs, then I think this would look okay. But because the ribbing on the cuffs looks so good, I kind of want to do it to the bottom now. The thing is, I am going to have to take off the last three rows because this is how big the ribbing is going to be. Because I made it the length of the sweater that I wanted. So this is technically how long as I want it to go. Because I want ribbing now, I need to take these three rows off, which isn't a big deal. It's better than me adding rows because that's more work, where this is taking off rows, which is less work. And that is why I always have the bottom of my projects where I finished my crocheting. So where I started the project is up here on the shoulder and where I end is down here because because look at that, I had to take three rows off. You cannot uncrochet something where you started. You have to uncrochet where you end Otherwise, it's just not going to work. I've had this happen to me before, and I've literally had to cut the project because you can't undo from where you started, but you can undo where you ended. That's why I always find it the best to attach everything where you start, because if you need to add on or you need to take off, it's easier to do it where you finish the project. And by the finished, I mean like when I'm working, we'll just go like this way. This is where I started and I worked up. And so when I'm working here, it's easy to take it off. It's easy to add on. That's all I'm saying is, is if you're doing a project like this or any project really, wherever you finished, make sure that is the most accessible part of the project for you if you need to add or take away yarn. That's pretty much what I'm saying. And here's the sweater all done. Honestly, I think this, this project is probably my favorite project that I have made all year. I know I've made like, I've made a car sweater. I've made a lot of things. And this, this is probably the best thing that I've made. Although I know I mentioned that it was kind of boring. It was okay. It was a little bit boring just because it was the same stitch over and over and over and over and over again. And I personally, like more of a little bit of a challenge, especially with tapestry projects. That's why tapestry crochet is probably my favorite because, you know, it uses my brain a little bit more, right? This was actually like really simple to make. It just, it took a while. And then I did take a little bit of break from making this to make something. This isn't that always the case. It's like I'll make something and then I'll stop it to do something else on a whim. Anywho, it's finally done. I love it. Okay, this ripple stitch, so stinking cute. Like it's so cute. And I'm kind of glad I did go with the ripple stitch. Part of me was thinking maybe I should have went with the zigzag chevron pattern, but I've done that enough. I needed a change. And this, this was the change the back it's the same it's the same honestly i don't know what the front or the back is i've tried this on several times and i don't think i've worn it right i don't know i need to make little tags that say made by me handmade or whatever so i can remember what's the front and what's the back because if there's not a pointed collar or an image on the front i really don't know unless it's a cardigan i understand the cardigan but uh certain projects i still don't know i think i did a good job with with the width i believe it was like 86 chains because you had to do it in multiples of 12 otherwise i would have went with 80 and i think i think that worked part of me was like oh maybe you should have went 70 for this one shut up michelle 
scale. No, you saw what happened last time when I went to 17. It was a little bit too small. But then that part of me was thinking maybe I should have went 70. It is a bigger stitch, you know, because it's it's a double instead of a single. So maybe I could have got away with 70 chains across. I just love the fit of the 80 chains. Okay, that's that's where I'm going. And then everything worked out properly. I am so happy I put the ribbing on the bottom. I tried it on without it and when I went like this, this back piece just kind of like was like out to here. I felt like if I bent down everything would be like my back would be open. You know what I mean? I just like the ribbing on the bottom. I think it just ties it together especially because I did the sleeves. Now if I had done the sleeves like an open sleeve like a bell sleeve then the ribbing at the bottom I don't think necessarily would have made sense. I don't think it would have looked right but because I did the cuffs and once I did the cuffs I'm like I have to do the bottom. Here is the neck. This is the first time of me doing a collar like this. It's just single crochets around and around and around and around. That's essentially all I did. It's just single crochets. Because normally I would do the ribbing, but I feel like the ribbing just made it too tight. And I felt that doing the pointed collar for this particular sweater wasn't the vibe. <laughs> it just wasn't the look. I think like this is pretty good. I also think that if I would have went like higher and then I could roll it over, I think that's also a good look, which I still can do. So I can still add more if I decide to, but I think like the fit of it is pretty good. I like the bagginess of the sleeves. I give it a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. I don't think there's anything wrong with this project. I think this is probably my favorite project. Sure, there was some hiccups along the way, but overall, all right, let's get into the logistics of this project. The notes. It took me 27 hours and 35 minutes, give or take, because sometimes I'll wander away and I won't be crocheting, but then I count that as my crochet time. I do my best to be like, oh, I left to go get food minus 20 minutes. You know what I mean? Also like in that time was the ribbing. I think the ribbing alone took probably three hours. For the colors, I actually bought, which you probably already saw like what, 20 minutes ago, but for me, I bought these colors like a month or two ago. I bought three of each color because I wasn't sure. I only needed one and a half skeins of yarn for the orange and for the white, but for the brown because I did the cuffs and I did the ribbing on the bottom and I did this little kind of neckline and I also attached everything in the brown. I did need two complete skeins of yarn, but I did not need three. Future Michelle, I have it written down. So if you make this again, I only need two skeins of yarn of each. So technically I did need to buy two of each color that's fine. These colors are so cute together. So I will be using them for other projects, obviously. I will be posting a version of this type of pattern on my Patreon. And what I mean by that, as long as you know how to do the ripple stitch, which there are a lot of um, tutorials out there on YouTube. That's how I learned how to do this. You pretty much can make this. So in the Patreon one, I think I'm just going to be giving you the dimensions of this, as well as like how many rows up, how many chains across, the ribbing and stuff like that. So if you want to make a replica of this, you'll have the directions to do it, but you do need to know how to do the ripple stitch in order to make it. There's that, because this is just so stinking cute. Like, I don't want to take it off. But unfortunately, we're going through a heat wave at the beginning of September, so I can't wear this outside. I'm very saddened about it because I bought a really cool coat, which is over here. I'll just quickly show it to you. It's this one. I just, I bought it. It's going to be part of a thrift haul next week, but I also can't wear that until it gets cooler out. So that will do it for this video. If you're new to my channel, like sewing, thrifting, crafting, and of course, crocheting, why not hit the subscribe button? You can follow me on my Instagram, my TikTok, and of course, my Patreon. I think that's it. See y'all have a good day now.